is kind of dark. I hope that this camera will adjust. Hopefully this will work okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Abington Co. channel. Uh, we are live from Croatia and I'm going to try and move this camera because it's way too dark. But I did want to show you what Croatia looks like behind me. So that's kind of one of the reasons why we tested this out. We were looking at this from a different camera and everything looked great. So if uh, if you guys can't see me, if this is too shadowed, then I'm definitely gonna be moving this. But um, I am from Croatia. I'm not from Croatia, I'm coming to you from Croatia um, because it's, it's, one, it's my holiday, and two, this is, history is like one of my favorite things ever. So um, I was raised by, um, my dad was like Merlin from Sword in the Stone, if you know um, that character, and he was just such a history buff that uh, I ended up learning about all types of history. His favorite being Roman history, and Croatia is a very Roman history, um, full of Roman history, type of country. So the reason why I wanted to do this from my bedroom window and showing you a bit of Croatia behind me is because of the history of this city and the history of the company. I wanted to cover a few things that people have been asking on social media and uh, also wanting to know about how to get into flying, how to start a watch company. Um, some of those things that are not always your run-of-the-mill, typical, this is kind of how this, you know, how it works, how it happens, and uh, why would even one want to do these in the first place. So that is what we're going to cover today. It's probably not going to be a super long video, but if you like history and uh, you like just stories in general, it doesn't need to be something that is true and from historical times. It can be anything, then you're definitely going to want to stay tuned and watch this video. So um, to give you a bit of the story as to what I'm doing in Split, I'm in Split, Croatia, which is the second largest city next to the capital. And this is a coastal city. It's one of the main places of tourism. Croatia has just grown exponentially with tourism. Um, a lot of it's from uh, Game of Thrones, which came out a few years ago. Also Mamma Mia, and uh, just it's one of the only countries that is open right now that you can travel to. So um, if you're looking for a really good vacation spot and uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money, Croatia is actually very inexpensive as well. Um, and, uh, and it's absolutely stunning. This is very Mediterranean. Lots of wine, lots of olive oil, lots of pasta, fish, just that whole climate, that whole like beach city type of feel that um, you can get out here. So uh, that's Croatia for you. Where I'm at right now is Diocletian's Palace. Diocletian's Palace is, um, let's see, it was built in 295 uh, after Christ or CE, and uh, Diocletian was one of the last Roman emperors. No, I shouldn't say one of the last, there were definitely a few more after him, but he was the one of the only, if not the only, Roman emperor to retire. He didn't get poisoned, he didn't get killed, he retired, and he retired here. Um, and his palace, it took 10 years to build, and it's actually a, a living monument. People can come here and they can just walk around it, and there's shops set up, and there's bars and cafes and restaurants and, sh and just all sorts of things. So it's kind of crazy that there's a UNESCO heritage site right here called Diocletian's Palace where you can go through and you can just sit and have a coffee in the morning. It's kind of cool. Um, so definitely want to check that out. Um, it's, it, it, it's just stunning. I don't know how to explain it other than you'll never be able to walk through, experience, stay in. Like you can live, you can buy an apartment in Diocletian's Palace and uh, you have to maintain, you can't like redecorate it and be all modern because it's on the World Heritage um, site. So you, you have to maintain um, what, you know, all of the historical registries are wanting to preserve. But that means you might have a Roman column going through your kitchen. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, check that out because I believe the only people that are living in Diocletian's Palace 
are older people and um, also like really rich people that just want to own a piece of a palace in Croatia. So kind of crazy, but um, also really, really cool. So that's Diocletian's palace and uh, Diocletian ended up dying of uh, a pretty bad sickness. Um, and then this palace was being used to refuge uh, members of the royal, not royal family, but like the emperor's family, if ever the emperor was being attacked, this is where the wives and the children would come to escape. And then also, um, it was kind of used for just a whole bunch of different things throughout the centuries. So um, definitely check this place out. If you have not been to Croatia, put it on your bucket list. It's really, really beautiful. Um, so history, history, why is history important? You know, history is important for so many reasons. One, we get to learn from our mistakes, right? So um, we learn about wars, we learn about empires, we learn about what worked, what didn't work, and uh, history just does that to us, where we can, um, we can definitely learn and experience other cultures through history and through stories. And so what I wanna discuss a little bit today is um, the history of a little watch company called the Abingdon Co. And it really started out where um, this was, and I say this with love, and this is something I've always said in, whenever I get interviewed, um, that it was for selfish reasons that I started a watch company. And um, the history of this watch brand, because this is now 15 years into the brand, so one of the things that I wanna make sure happens is that we are documenting, documenting, that's a word now, documenting how the history of the company evolves throughout the years because I don't ever plan on really leaving this company. Um, I, it's, you know, Coco Chanel was um, a woman who created a brand and stayed with it all the way through. There was never an intent really to, to just build it fast and then sell it. And this is something that I feel the same way about. Um, it's, it's part of my life and I want to maintain uh, the posterity of it and I want to um, just continue it for many, many years and hopefully pass it on to generations and um, at least somebody who definitely cares because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be having children, um, but that doesn't mean that somebody else who really can take this and build it with more love and just, um, just have a, um, you know, a, a, a means of, of passing it on. I'm not quite sure how to explain, but the ethos of empowerment and strength and everything is very important to the brand. So I want to make sure that whoever this passes on to will maintain those values. So um, to start off, and this is something that if you have any questions about how to get into flying, how to start a watch brand, maybe this story will help in you creating your own journey. So, and you can always comment on YouTube lives. Definitely wanna throw any questions or anything in the comments below and I'm happy to answer. But the way the company started is, uh, I, was, I was really interested in learning how to fly when I was 14 years old. At 14 years old, I wanted to be a pilot because I heard about people, um, these people came into my high school and talked about flying. And one of the things that um, they said that I thought was really important, because all I did, I went to a career lunch um, that my career center was hosting. People would come in and talk about what they did for a living. We all went for the free food. That was basically all us 14 year olds wanted to do. But one of the things that they had said is that you don't have to join the military to learn how to fly. And to me, that was kind of like, wait, what did you just say? Because I thought all pilots came from the military and that is not the case at all. You've got universities, you have trade schools, which is like what I went to. I went to a flight school in Santa Monica. You have a whole bunch of different options. The military is definitely one of them. And if you wanna learn how to fly in the military, all the power to you. Um, but I, and I did get accepted to the Air Force Academy. However, I wanted to um, guarantee a pilot position and I didn't know if I could do that through the Air Force Academy. So I wanted to make sure that I um, was training for a pilot. So I went to a trade school. I went to a school in Santa Monica Airport. Um, and it was there that I, I think in yeah, 2006, I got my private pilot's license in, in 06. About 
August, September, and I had a headset. My, my parents had um, scrambled all their money together and I was like 22 years old and they bought me a David Clark headset and it, had, it worked for helicopters and airplanes. It was noise canceling, had a big battery box on it. So um, one of the very first noise canceling headsets. So I had that already. Um, and there's three things that any good pilot has and they have protection of the ears, protection of the eyes, and a backup instrument to the tool or to the uh, instruments in the airplane. So I had the headset. Sunglasses are like my weakness. They're my kryptonite. I lose them all the time. So um, the sunglasses, I didn't want to invest in a good pair of sunglasses because I knew I'd probably lose them. So I definitely just, I kind of passed that. And, you know, I wear the cheapies. But the watch, the watch was the one thing that I thought, why don't I gift myself a really good aviation watch? Because this is the beginning of my career. And in 06, when I went onto Google and looked up, you know, female pilot watches, anything like that, um, it was crickets. Nothing came up. And I asked my flight instructors who had these amazing watches that did all of these incredible calculations, time, speed, and distance, fuel consumption, uh, you name it, it did it. And they were like, yeah, we just, um, we found it here, we found it there, but I don't know if we've ever seen anything for women. So um, I was a bit bummed at that, and I didn't, I kind of thought that maybe I could do a, um, uh, thank you, Diana, I, I appreciate that. Um, and if you don't know Diana Klein, who just commented, she's Mrs. Nevada, um, and she's also got an incredible story, military pilot, airline pilot, She's working with space. She's just cool. By the way, speaking of women in space, today, Wally Funk, if you don't know who the Mercury 13 is, Wally Funk, this is like slight digression, but so worth men mentioning. She's one of the Mercury 13. It was a group of female astronauts that were training to go into space that never went into space. And today, she is launching into space for the first time in her life, in history, she's going up with Jeff Bezos. He, uh, she's, he invited her as his guest. So Wally, to the moon, to infinity, to Mars, to everywhere and beyond, good luck. And you are going to have the best day of your life. I'm pretty sure today is the best day of your life, Wally. So I am so, so happy for you that you are going into space. Bravo. Um, if you don't know Wally Funk's story, go check her out on Wikipedia. Go check her out on the news right now. That's today's the day. So I'm really, really excited for her. So where was I? Um, so uh, watches, I wanted one. I gave up on the idea. This was probably around September of 2006. And then fast forward a few months later to December, I was with the 99s, which I am a member of. The 99s, uh, the oldest female pilot organization in the world. It's called the 99s because it was started by Amelia Earhart and 98 other women were at the very first meeting. So I've been a member of the 99s since 2006 and uh, we were at our Christmas dinner. And our Christmas dinner, um, everybody was talking about what they wanted for Christmas. And um, a woman at the table said, you know, I've always wanted an aviation watch, but they just won't make them for women. And the reason being is because we are 6%. Now we're about 7% of the industry, so it hasn't changed much in 15 years. Um, but that means that there's only about 50,000 certificated pilots in the United States. Um, an interesting fact that Dr. Becky Luti uh, made me aware of about a year ago is that most of those pilots are student pilots. So they're not even attaining the private instrument commercial or airline st um, type of uh, pilot certificate. So um, why would a watch company ever want to create a product for 50,000 uh, female pilots? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, so I, was, I said to her, and we were all talking about it in conversation, um, I had the same idea a few months ago and I was looking for a pilot's watch. They didn't make anything. So it was at that dinner in 2006 that we all decided, I decided I was going to start a pilot's watch and they were going to help me design it. So the 99s, um, the ch Palms chapter of the 99s helped me over the next 11 months and I set a deadline that November 3rd, 2007, I would launch the Abington Co. with two 
watches. A GMT, which is a Greenwich Mean Time or a Zulu watch, uh, and then also a stopwatch. Those are the two primary functions that pilots use, and so I figured if I could put it all onto one watch that would be ideal, but if I can't, I will come out with two watches, and that's what we started with. So the Jackie and the Amelia were the very, very first two watches that ever came out. Um, I had five color choices, so there was a dreamy white sunset pink and seaplane green for the Jackie, and then runway black and cloud white for the Amelia. And it was with those five watches that the Abington Co. launched. I had my boyfriend at the time, he built me a website, or his brother built me a website that was pretty cream of the crop for 2007, but um, nothing compared to what it is today. And then I started and it gained a lot of momentum right at the very beginning. We were getting a lot of press. Um, there was just, uh, uh, people hadn't really seen it before, didn't really know if it was going to take off and um, it did. And I worked really, really hard at making sure that this was something that would be um, carried on for many, many years because even when I was looking for friends and family to invest, when I was looking for actual investors and when I was trying to get this all started, everybody was saying, but why? You're such a small market. There's no way that a female pilot's watch is going to take off. And uh, when I paid back my last investor in 2012, because it was a five-year loan that people were um, bringing into the company, uh, one of them even said, I never thought this would, this would happen. I never thought that you were going to ever pay me back. And I never thought that um, the company would be doing so well. So um, I love, you know, um, I love skeptics. Skeptics are my primary motivator. And uh, if you tell me I can't do something, probably going to do everything in the world to try and prove you wrong. So um, if that's one, uh, if you ever want to motivate me to do something, just tell me I can. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's how the company started. We launched in 2007. So people are asking me, how old is the company now? As 14, 15 years. I always say 15 because I count it from 06 when the idea was started. Um, we are still today the first, been recognized as the first pilot's watch for women, designed by women, uh, female pilots, and then for female pilots. Now, that said, fast forward to season six of Shark Tank, um, where I presented the brand to, uh, let's see, who did we have? We had, um, starting from one side to the other, Mark Cuban, Damon John, uh, Kevin O'Leary, um, Lori Grainer and Robert Hershevac, so the originals. Um, I pitched my brand to them. I did not get a deal. Kevin O'Leary did offer a, a horrible deal, and I, I responded with an equally horrible deal that involved an airplane flight, a parachute, no doors. Um, and, uh, and in preparation for Shark Tank, I really had to make this company marketable. And so in getting together with my mentors, getting together with my customers, getting together with everybody to try and prepare for this, because you're going on national television, you do not want to make a fool of yourself. Um, I thought, well, we all kind of came up with the idea that this cannot just be a female pilot watch anymore. This has to be more than that. So let's um, start introducing other styles of watches. So in surveying and seeing customers at trade shows, and I said, what other things do you guys do? And primarily, people that fly airplanes also scuba dive. They also race cars. They also own motor motorcycles. They also own guns. So it really was starting to take the shape um, about seven years later of a uh, adventure watch company. So diving was the next watch that we came in, came up with and um, put designs down. Did the same exact thing that we did with female pilot with the pilot watch where I had the 99s help me design. Um, I grabbed a, uh, put together a group of customers that were existing Abington Co. crew members and also divers and they were, all types of diving. So they owned dive shops, they ran dive shops, they were dive masters, dive instructors, recreational divers. And I said, okay, help me, you know, what do you guys want in a, in a dive watch? Cause I'd like to start creating this. And that's what we presented to shark, to shark tank and to the sharks. Um, luckily I didn't get an investor and I think that was a good thing, good stroke of luck, um, because I didn't have to give up any of the, the company to a bunch of people that may or may not have taken me down the right path. Um, currently, uh, I actually have investors and, and other business equity owners, so it's, it's different, but what I like about them, we just have a, such a 
synchromonious relationship. And if anybody is looking at getting into business, when you choose partners, be incredibly careful about it because it's you're marrying them. It's almost like you marry somebody before you date them. And, uh, and it's a very tricky situation. So just take your time if ever you're looking at bringing in partners. Um, and when I mean time, I mean like years if possible. So, um, so yeah, so Shark Tank was the defining moment that we stopped doing solely aviation watches and we started doing other adventures with the dive watch being the first. Now, at about the same time, we also got on to, uh, you may remember that I was on Flying Wild Alaska on Discovery Channel. And that was another pivotal moment of the company because um, not only did I get to cross off something off my bucket list and go fly around in Alaska, but it gave recognition, recognition instantly to, uh, to the brand. People saw the watch on Discovery Channel, they went and looked at the website, they checked it out. It was um, where we really started going, just shooting, ex exponential growth. And uh, I was on season three of Flying Wild Alaska. I was Ariel Tweedo's flight instructor on the show and she did end up getting her pilot certificate. Um, very, very proud of her. She was an excellent student. Um, and, uh, and so that was season three in the last season of Flying Wild Alaska. Shark Tank came up, um, and uh, though we didn't get a deal, we definitely had a lot of exposure from that show as well. Um, so all of these things are happening, and then one of the other historical things that I'm, um, I'm parts, I should say, um, well, one thing that happened that I'm, I'm really proud of, and it kind of became this whole full circle with the 99s, um, uh, helping design the watch, and though this, this organization, the Air Race Classic, is not, uh, it's not a 99's, uh, how do I explain it? It's a separate organization, the Air Race Classic, but it's very connected to the 99's. The Air Race Classic, we ended up becoming the official watch of the Air Race Classic, which is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, um, transcontinental race in airplanes around the world. Uh, um, and uh, what they do is they have a different route every year around the United States. It just finished. It usually happens early summer, late spring every year. And, uh, and so we were the official watch of the Air Race Classic, which really put us on the map. We gave a lot of, um, started doing a lot of charity with them and with other organizations. And it's one of the things that I am most proud of introducing the brand to. So that happened. Um, let's see, a couple other kind of landmarks through the history of the company. In 2018, um, there were two things that happened. One, I went on to Michael Blakey's channel. So if you guys are big YouTubers, then you definitely know Michael Blakey's channel and producer Michael and I, funny enough, we learned, uh, we were working on our flight training back in 06 at the same school in Santa Monica. That's where I met Michael. Um, I recognized his accent because it's the same place that I'm from in England. And uh, when we met, he was like, okay, you know, he, he kind of dismissed me as like some, I was like, where's your accent from? I, I can hear it. And he's like, oh, and he was just kind of not giving really, really giving me the time of day, but he was very kind, still very kind and, and just uh, indulged. I, I didn't know who he was. I didn't realize he was a big, a music producer or anything and I was just I just heard the accent and I recognized it from my hometown so um, when I went back to England uh, in 2018 I had messaged him and I said hey I'm back in our hometown and uh, um, and I you just crossed my mind and he's like oh well we should you know what are you doing and I said well watches flying airplanes and um, and just living life and he was like well, I love watches. I love airplanes. Let's we should do a uh, a YouTube video and uh, and discuss watches and airplanes. So we ended up flying around. Now his channel has blown up crazy. He's got over a million subscribers. If you have not subscribed to Michael Blakey's channel, you definitely got to do that. And um, and then one of the things that uh, that um, helped with that is I ended up meeting Adam Swords, who is his videographer, and also. He's also a, um, 
I, he's, he's, it's like both of their channels. I don't know how to explain, but if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's super amusing. And then I went and I have given him his first flight lesson. So um, Adam and Michael are really, really good friends and they've helped um, build the brand and just, uh, they're, they're just really, really good people. So, um, so that happened early 2019. And right before that, these watches, uh, we did a group crew member hike up to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. So some of the places that an Abingdon watch has been is, um, I think we have uh, astronauts training with them. We've got transcontinental races, uh, hiking Mount Kilimanjaro. Now this wasn't a crew member specific hike. This was one of our crew members, retired Colonel Laurel Burkell who was retiring in 2018. She had suffered a helicopter crash during her years of service. Um, she was retiring in her 50s and uh, she wanted to do her retirement ceremony at the summit and she invited me along to be there. And it was one of the most humbling experiences that I have ever had. I was medically evacuated um, by a helicopter and uh, had extreme altitude sickness and it was just, um, I don't know if I'd ever do it again, but um, I'm glad that I did it and I'm glad that I survived. So um, we had, I want to say there were about four crew members on this hike. And, um, and, uh, and so that, it, it, now what we're trying to do is we're trying to organize um, more expeditions, more adventures uh, with crew members. And if you are a crew member and you own an Abingdon watch, you already know this, but there are certain perks that you get in either invitation only by email. Um, there's a certain watches that you only get exposed to. There's certain um, advantages that uh, kind of the general public doesn't know about. So as a crew member, you're awesome. We want to take good care of you and we'll continue to offer these things. Um, so this was something that uh, was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life was hike Mount Kilimanjaro, but we did make it. And then 2020, another thing I'm super, super proud of uh, being a part of is the National Gay Pilots Association 30 year anniversary watch. And uh, the NGPA and the Abington Co. have always been a very, very um, just friendly. We've had a friendly relationship. I'm a huge ally of the LGBTQ community and uh, my husband and I both are and we try to provide scholarships and to provide um, charitable donations and uh, for those that know about the very very early history of the company you'll know that the silent partner in the Abingdon Co. Um, has been there since day one, one of the original investors. Um, I won't say who her name is, but her and her wife have been super, super supportive of just growing this brand. And, um, and she also uh, helped to get the very first customer, so, which I told in a previous YouTube Live, so um, you might already know about her. But the NGPA, National Gay Pilots Association, is um, a great group for advocating and being representation of the LGBTQ community in the aviation industry. And they just celebrated their 30 year anniversary um, in 2020. And so what we did is we helped design, build, and distribute their 30 year anniversary watch, limited edition, 50 pieces only, serial numbered. Um, there's only, I don't even know if any are left yet. Um, so uh, you can find them on the black market, just kidding. But uh, it was one of the most proud moments. I've, I've designed watches for other organizations before, but not one that I really thoroughly believe in and support. So I'm very, very happy about that. So this kind of gives you a little bit of the history of the brand, um, just some of the things that have been pivotal in the first 15 years of the company and uh, how we started, what we've done, where we've been, who we're working with and where we want to go. Um, and this is, I say we, because it's not just me. This brand is so much bigger than myself. Um, it's the crew, it's all of you, the customers. Uh, it's our equity partners now. We have um, several key players that are helping build this brand and they're incredibly smart, so I'm very happy that they're on the team. Um, and, uh, and just um, the, the whole goal of this company is to be 
an empowerment brand for women. Uh, in the watch industry, which I adore, um, there is not always a lot of recognition given to women. And, uh, and, there's, and that's changing for sure. Um, but just women in the watch industry, um, women's watches in particular, often are sometimes just seen as an afterthought. So what we want to do, we, uh, we want to take the Abington Co. into space. If I could have you know, gotten a watch over to Wally today as she uh, bolts up into space for the first time, I would have. But you know what? She's busy doing her thing, and I'm super proud of her. She does have a Ladies It's Time to Launch sticker. So those stickers are free right now on the Abington Co. website in her honor today. So anybody that orders any watch, if they, um, if they just add those, you'll see that it, it takes out the price. So uh, that's all week long. Um, but, uh, but it's something that I, um, I want to make sure that Abingdon watches and the company grows into the adventure space. I'd love to be sailing the regatta. I'd love to be a part of some of the sailing races and the Governor's Cup in Southern California and um, some of these events that we are doing, the Reno Air Races, uh, some of the women that race there. Um, you're going to see the Abington Company be a part of these much more intimately, trying to be um, just a forthcoming adventure, um, the first of first, supporting the women that are doing this, that are you know uh, swimming the English Channel and um, breaking records and winning gold medals and um, and just just living life hard hard and to the fullest and on the brink and pushing themselves to the limit over the limit and uh, and breaking barriers that's really what this company is all about so uh, i want to do one of these videos in another 15 years and see what more i can add to um, but if there's anything that you guys want to see the abington company be a part of Put that in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like watches and women and empowerment and all that fun stuff, then we do some great adventure videos and uh, we definitely do a lot of watch videos as well. Um, so go ahead, click the subscribe, hit the notification bell next to it so that you can stay up to date with um, whenever we launch a new video. And every other week I try to come at you with something live, something new, something entertaining. This is the second on location live that we've done, so I'm looking forward to doing a few more. Um, if you haven't seen Croatia, come on out, check this place out. It's absolutely stunning. and. Um, and that's what I got. So I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you guys on another video and have a fantastic week and a fantastic rest of the year. It is time to travel. Ladies, it is time to do more. It is time to be adventurous and it's time to just have a lot of fun. See ya.